The San Bernardino Arrowhead, located in the mountains above the city is believed to be a natural landmark, made of light quartz and covered by short white sage. The shape is ringed by greasewood and can be seen up to 30 miles away. It measures about 1,375 feet high by 450 feet wide. The arrowhead has become the symbol of the county and city of San Bernardino. The history of the arrowhead and the hot and cold water springs below the landmark go back in time, before the arrival of American settlers from the east. Stories of the arrowhead's ancient past are still being told by Native Americans. Legends that were passed down in time by the peoples who called the area their homelands. In fact, the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians have purchased the Arrowhead Springs Hotel and adjoining lands, bringing this beautiful area back into the tribe's control. Future plans for the land have not been disclosed by the tribe, but it is reassuring to know that it's now owned by those who have history and respect of the land. The rich history of the Arrowhead area, including the springs, is so extensive that I cannot do it justice in one video. I will make several videos to break down the history by the eras of this special place, from prehistory to the present day. This first episode will tell the stories and legends of the Native Americans who lived and migrated through the land around the Arrowhead. The absolute best source of information in print and photos about Arrowhead Springs is a book written by Mark Landis, titled Arrowhead Springs, California's Ideal Resort. Mark does freelance writing for local newspapers in the Inland Empire and has a passion for local history. I would not have made an attempt to make historical videos about Arrowhead Springs if not for the awesome book. If you are interested in the story of the Arrowhead and the Springs history, I cannot recommend this book enough. You can also get a copy from LandisPublications.com. Episode 1 of the Tales of Arrowhead Springs concentrates on the stories of the Native Americans that have been passed down to us. I found that three different tribes have oral histories of the Arrowhead and the Springs. The first story is from the Tongva people, they are also known as the Gabrielino or Mission Indians. This map shows locations of Tongva tribal villages. At the far right, the arrow points to where the Guachama Rancheria was located. This was the easternmost range of the Tongva people. Those who lived at the Rancheria looked straight across the San Bernardino Valley at the Arrowhead. In the Guachama legend, the Arrowhead story is about correction from the Creator. The people lived in the Valley of Plenty and grew complacent in their worship of the Great Father. The Giver of Life was patient with the people who had forsaken His power, but that came to an end. The Great Father used the sun to devastate the land, burning the plants, drying up the streams and driving out the game that the people hunted. The tribe wailed in pain. Death of all living things increased until the people finally humbled themselves before the Great Father, laying low before him, they offered to make a sacrifice to regain his favor. The tribal chief was father to his one child, a daughter. The girl's name was, Nguana, meaning Maiden of the New Moon. She was the most beautiful and beloved woman in the village. The chief appealed to the Great Father to help the people through the devastation in the valley. It finally heard a voice from the sky. It said give Nuwana up, as an offering to heaven. A stillness fell upon the village as the chief dressed his daughter in her finest robe and gold. It led her to where the voice directed and left his daughter there as he returned to the village. The destroyer sacrificed Nuwana with fire and she was consumed. 
At that moment the heavens opened up with white arrows of light that struck the destroyer and ended the heat. One arrow struck the mountain side and remained there for all to see. Water rained down from above and sprang up from below to cool the ground. The heat destroyer cried out in pain as the cool water consumed him and the earth opened up and took him away. As the earth closed back up, streams of boiling water bubbled from under the cracks in the rocks. The people drank of the waters and bathed in them. The waters healed the people who lived many generations thriving at the foot of the Arrow Mountain. The second legend comes from the Kawia tribe. Today, they can be found at the Ogwa Caliente Reservation in Palm Springs. The Kawia tribe of Southern California have a legend about the Arrowhead, and like so many peoples throughout history that migrate, they tell how they were guided by supernatural powers. Being warred upon by neighboring tribes the Kawia moved westward at the command of the Great Spirit. They found favor with the Creator and they were instructed they would be guided by a fiery arrow. They traveled westward and the legend goes on to say that one night the tribal centuries saw a flaming arrow coming from the east fly across the sky crashing upon the mountain. The arrow shaft was consumed with fire but the arrowhead remained. As daylight broke they made their way to the promised land, living in the shadow of the arrow in peace, until the coming of the white settlers. The third story is from the Serrano people. Known today as the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. This is the tribe that purchased the Arrowhead Springs lands in 2016 and is the current owner. I have read on the internet and in print that the Serrano tribe has many legends about the Arrowhead, but getting clear verifiable accounts of them seems to be elusive. I have seen in print too many of the native legends being mixed up as to which tribe the story actually comes from. All three of the tribe's legends seem to include that the arrowhead is a marker from the creator to show an Eden-like place to live. The San Manuel Band of Mission Indians' name in Serrano is Uhaviatum, meaning people of the pines. Their homelands were from the San Bernardino Valley up to the Baldwin Lake area of the San Bernardino Mountain. Traditionally they migrated between these areas to best make use of the food sources that matured at different times of the year. I have short tales of their historical connection to the Arrowhead Springs area. In Mark Landis's book he tells about a story that San Manuel progenitor Santos Manuel passed on. The legend tells of two Serrano warriors who both fell in love with the beautiful daughter of the chief. They were to carve the hardest flint arrowheads and fight each other to the death for her hand in marriage. The winner of the fight took the bloodied arrow from the dead warrior and fired it onto the mountain where it landed and grew into the giant arrowhead we see today. The next story, strangely enough, comes all the way from an Indian boarding school in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. A young Serrano woman named Agnes V. Waite started classes in October 1908. She was there until 1912. Later the school found out she was teaching at an Indian school in Yuma, Arizona. While at the Carlisle School, she told of a legend about an evil spirit named Takish. The Takish flies between the land of the Arrowhead Springs to the San Jacinto Mountain. The Takish can be seen as a large ball of fire and shrieks as it passes its victims. With its loud sounds, it tries to destroy their hearing. Agnes told how the adults used the threats of the Takish to get children to obey. She likened it to how white people did the same with the bogeyman. This story was printed in the school paper called The Red Man in 1912. Vincent Dewar, former San Manuel tribal chairman, said, The area where the Arrowhead Springs property sits is referenced in many Serrano stories and has always been critical to our history and culture. 
and Daniel McCarthy, former director of cultural resources management for the tribe, also stated that the springs were well known to the Tongva and Kawia people, as well as the Serrano. I have come to the conclusion that peoples of the Tongva tribe, as well as peoples of the Kawia tribe and especially the Uhaviatam clan of the Serrano tribe all have history, legends, stories, and myths about this special place we call Arrowhead Springs. Being without a written account of this history, we don't know whether it goes back hundreds or thousands of years. It is clear though that this place was used for physical as well as spiritual healing. The ancient peoples lived near the springs and many passed through the land in migrating with the food sources. Now that ownership of this special land is with the Uhaviatam clan the future of Arrowhead Springs is bright. Thank you for joining me at a look back in time to the history of this unique and special place. The next episode will explain the coming of the white settlers and how that impacted the Arrowhead Springs.